uh, what I use to make a, a ring. I have a pair of a small pair of needle nose vice grips that I have taken and ground the edges off for a little bit more round uh, to keep from marring. I can also use a piece of plastic tubing that I cover on the end to make sure you don't gouge. Depending upon what size ring that I'm making, if it's this one in particular is going to be a 10. So I find the 10 and where I use their sockets, just uh, longer extension sockets. I find the one that just is a little bit smaller than the size I'm making. And I'm going to be making a, a spiral ring. Take it and just kind of put it in at a, a little bit of an angle like that and then clamp it down real hard. And this is why I was saying grind the edges off the vice grips because it, it just, even though you're using protective covering, it's still easier just to make sure you don't leave any gouges or marks or anything like that. I use a two-sided hammer one side is a hard rubber and this is uh, like the nylon and uh, I like the nylon it works a lot easier but then I just spread the boss out just enough to where I can hold it and then just use the hammer and start forming it down I always do the leading edge first, then take it apart and I'll turn it back the other way now. And that's just my preference. You can do either way. But see we've already got the the curve started of how it's gonna wrap. So you get that. Then I'll start it right there to where you're going to start the next bend sorry about that decent truck but I just I do a little bit at a time I don't try to do too much of it at a time you just keep taking it and then making your next point just a little bit farther up as you can notice there's nothing scratches or anything like that so then reclamp it put it in tap a few more times and like I said you can see it's folding down and around again you want to be careful when you're got it between the vise and always keep your piece a little bit centered on the socket so you can have an edge sitting on the vise where it won't scratch. You could get uh, rubber covers for that. Otherwise just be careful. Move it some more. Tap it some more. And like I said, you just kind of just really easy to keep, keep working. And again, like I said, I just keep taking smaller and smaller bites to where you eventually get it. And again, this is the time you want to start being careful when you got your ring up underneath it. You don't want to get it on that bias and mar it. So that's why protective cover probably would be good. Just never had it. Don't feel the 
need. At this point, I'd like to close up that gap a little bit between the, the ring. At this point, there's still time to do that. I use a leather glove down on this, and I just kind of, I mean, you're manhandling it in shape. Just, it's metal. Do what you want to do with it. Again, just want to make sure you don't get it on the other parts, you don't scratch it up. And then, other than a little finishing up and all that right there, that's a size 10 ring. And like I said, with it made like this, even if you want to make it a little bit smaller or bigger, you still can, you know, do some adding to it. What I end up doing now is I'll come back and a lot of times I'll put it on another mandrel, a metal mandrel, that I can then lay in between the vise and uh, get this last end piece down just a little bit more. But again, it's what you, it's what you end up with.